Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play the game Extinction Game of Ecology. This game was created in 1970 and it is for two to four players. Now the object of this game is you're going to try to become the last remaining species standing on an island with several different habitats. You're going to have several different types of cards that you're going to be able to go through and you're also going to have environmental change cards that are going to change up the game drastically, either for good or bad. So let's check it out. So in the game, you've got a board here, and this is the island of Darwinia, and these hexes here represent different habitats. Uh, the habitats are going to be green for the woodland, lakes for the, the blue spaces, the swamps are violet, the marshes are orange, the brushlands are tan, and then the meadows over here are yellow. And right over here, you're going to have six different types of cards that you're going to be drawing. And these cards are going to be used with this wheel over here, which are going to have different actions on them. And you're going to spin the wheel, and those are going to be the two actions that you are going to be able to take. Right over here are what are called population cubes. And uh, each of the pips basically is going to represent an animal. So this represents five animals. This represents one animal. In the beginning, you're going to be able to go ahead and place these dice anywhere over here on the island. You can group them together. Um, but you're going to start with 30 animals. So let's just say I decide I'd go ahead and do this. I'm going to put, say, six animals over here. I'll put five animals over here. I'll put one animal over here. I'll put three over here. I'll put another six over here, another six here, and then I'll put two here. And so that's how I'll set up my animals. And I'll go ahead and just for fun, I'll do this with orange as well. Right over here are what are called barrier cards. And you've got five different ones, two of each. Right here you have the desert, you have rivers, You've got cities, you've got jet ports, and then you have mountains. These two over here are going to be man-made, and they're going to affect any of the uh, hexes that they are adjacent to. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So right over here, you're going to spin this wheel first, and this is going to have two actions that you're going to be able to do. In the beginning, you're going to draw one of the, each of these cards, a habitat and mobility, a litter size, environmental resistance, a predator type, a prey defense, and a barrier crossing card. And these cards are going to be synonymous with whatever you spin here on the wheel with its action. First action is going to be reproduce, and this is going to allow you to uh, basically reproduce more animals that you'll be able to place on an area that has a die or adjacent to it. And there's two things you're going to look for. The first is you're going to look to see where you can reproduce. Uh, if I drew this, this would be I could reproduce in lakes and swamps. So I would look for anything that had a lake and a swamp. For example, this would be a lake this would be a lake, that would be a lake. So I would be able to reproduce in those areas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and look at what's called the litter size. Uh, this one says seven. So the way I would uh, calculate this is I would count my population, which would be 30, uh, times it by this amount, which is seven, and then divide it by 10. And that will tell me how many animals I will be able to place into wherever I am able to breed. Another action you can do is what is called migrate. Uh, what you'll do is you're going to look at the mobility card here, and this one says 20. What this simply means is that you're going to be able to move that amount of animals um, on the board, 20 spaces. So, for example, I could move, this would be 3, that would be 3, then this would be 6, and then this would be 9. You can split it up however you want to. Uh, you might not be able to cross certain barriers, though. The next one is called compete and predate. Now, this is a fun one. What you're going to do if you decide to predate, you're going to go ahead and look at what your predator type card is. I had one that said nocturnal. That's my predator. Now the opponent is going to look at what is called his prey defense card. And he has a defense against swift and camouflage predators, but not nocturnal predators. So let's just say I happen to be blue and I decide I was going to go ahead and try to attack this guy over here since he is not protected then I can go ahead and swoop in and basically take out all of uh, the animals that are there. Uh, there's another way you can do it, which is called compete, and that's going to be by the amount of animals you have in a certain area. So for example, if Orange is here, and I decided to compete, four beats two, so he would get knocked out, but I would go ahead and lose two animals myself in this case. Now, another one is called place barrier. Uh, placing a barrier simply means you're going to take one of these barriers over here and you're going to place it somewhere on the board. So let's just say I decided I was going to go ahead and place this desert over here. Now, each person is going to be receiving what's called the barrier crossing, and this is going to tell you where you'll be able to cross over. This one says jet ports and deserts. So if I was blue and I had this card, I could cross over, but if I was orange and did not have that ability to cross over that, I wouldn't be able to. Now, what you can do with change genes is you can go ahead and change out four of the gene cards that you have. So you have six, but you can trade up to four. So if, if you didn't like your 
litter size card, for example, you could discard it and draw another one. Or if you didn't like your predator type, you could go ahead and swap that out and draw another one. But you can do that with up to four of these different types of cards. And then finally, you're going to have environmental change. Now, these cards are going to change the game up a lot. I'll give you a few examples. For example, you have famine and pestilence. That will basically interfere with certain habitats with anything with five or more dots. So anything with five or more dots in that particular habitat will be taken out. You have cold waves and drought that basically will give you a percentage and if you don't have protection which you can if you have environmental resistance this has drought resistance for example if you don't have that then you're going to have to go ahead and fulfill the requirements of it would give you a percentage figure and then you would go ahead and take out that percentage of creatures fire will basically eliminate all from a habitat we also have pollution pollution will basically be taken out depending on the type of barrier like an airport for example is going to give pollution so if you happen to be next to an airport when pollution comes all of the creatures are going to be taken out by that and basically everything else is going to eliminate uh, certain creatures from particular habitats you've got cutting woodlands draining swamps uh, using marshes filling lakes so they're going to be particular habitats but they're going to take out all the creatures in them but anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to just play the game and you're going to attempt to try to be the last species standing. And if you're able to do that, you will win the game. When I first found this game, this was a game that I had never heard of and nobody really would know about it because this was made from a zoology professor back in the 1970s who really wanted to use it as a tool for his students. Um, but man, I got to tell you, I really wish that they would reproduce this game and re-release it because I love this game. The times I played it when I was reading the rules, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's really cool. With all the different actions you have to reproduce and to migrate, you can move around and reproduce, and you're also trying to figure out uh, where you want to have your dice because certain areas are going to help you to make more species. Then there's places where you can migrate. And then, of course, you've got the barriers, and the barriers can either help you or hurt you, uh, depending on if they're man-made. And really, those environmental change cards, my gosh, that can change up the whole game completely. You can be, like, way behind but if somebody ends up like losing 50% of their population, which has happened to me before, you, you know, it, it just changes so much with everything. And a lot of it can seem a little bit random, I know, because the environmental change cards can just do this and do this and do this. But a lot of what this game is talking about really is ecology. And it talks a lot about man-made things. And it just talks about things like floods and fires and things like that and how it can affect the habitat and, and all that. Game is a, it's like a strategy game that's got like a lot of these luck elements in there but you can change things up you can change your predators you can change all sorts of stuff i mean i love it uh, i think it's just a great game and i know that there's games out there now that kind of follow the formula of this one but uh yeah i would definitely pick it up if you could it's not a easy game to find and if you can find one with all the dice um that definitely would be a plus too i had to buy some extra dice of different colors because i just simply could not find the dice anywhere there were different sizes different shades so yeah i definitely check it out if you had a chance all right guys that's my review of extinction game of ecology we'll see you keep on gaming